Okay. I'm gonna be playing some Hollow Knight. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience with the game. I played it a bit in the past, like I, I want to say a year ago or something like around then. Uh, but I didn't. I don't think I made it too far. I'm not great at these types of games, but they're pretty fun. So I wanted to try, and I feel like it's a fun game to do on stream. Yeah, obviously starting from a new save. But yeah, even like, I have like maybe a couple hours, uh, but that's probably like in actuality equivalent to like an hour or so if somebody like knows what they're doing. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit different than like Hades where I have like a ton of hours in it already. Or with Celeste, where I've already beaten it, but again, that was even longer than I'd beaten Celeste even longer ago than I played Hollow Knight. This is mostly fresh, and at like one day, I'm not sure. pretty fresh. Please let me know if there's any like technical stuff, because uh, it can be a bit hard for me to tell. I, mean, I know that's caused problems recently, and I want to make sure that doesn't happen again. They've done a really nice job with like the ambiance here, I think. Like it really feels underground. <sighs> Beings whose words are for you alone, your great strength marks you amongst us, focus your soul and you shall achieve feats of which others can only dream. Alright, so that's healing and stuff. I guess I should be a bit more aware of like stalactites and stuff. Is that stalactite or stalagmite? I think it's stalactite. Pretty sure stalagmites are the ones on the ground. What's this? Oh, it grants like extra, like a shield. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like I said, even though I've played this before, a lot of this is gonna be. Either new or I've forgotten. Oh, we can't jump that high. I'm assuming we get a double jump something later then. More stalactites, yikes. Or can we. F nah, I don't think we can make that. Yeah, because the ceiling goes down. Hi, 
higher beings, these words are for you alone. Beyond this point, you enter the land of king and creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. Bear witness to the last and only civilization, the eternal kingdom, Hollow Nest. Would it be Hollow Nest? Halo Nest, right? Check doors, only smash. What are those in the background? I, hmm. I, I, I'm assuming they're shells or something. But. Oh there, traveler. I'm afraid there's only me left to offer welcome. Our town's fallen quiet, you see. The other residents, they've all disappeared, headed down that well one by one into the caverns below. Used to be there was a great kingdom beneath our town. It's long fell to ruin, yet it still draws folks into its depths. Wealth, glory, enlightenment. That darkness seems to promise all things. I'm sure you two seek your dreams down there. Well, watch out. It's a sickly air that fills the place. Creatures turn mad and travelers are robbed of their memories. Perhaps dreams aren't such great things after all. Ah, I shouldn't have rested. I lost the shield. For all your map mapping supplies, we'll be opening soon. Is out in corner for. So I guess that they're just two of the people down there we have to find. You know, I assume it unlocks after we find both of them. So yeah, I'm getting them and the map as soon as possible. Pretty helpful. I am not great at navigation. Some here. Go on. Hello there. How's it delightful to meet another traveler on these forgotten roads? You're a short one, but you have a strong look about you. I'm Quirrell. I have something of an obsession with uncharted places. This ancient kingdom's. This ancient kingdom holds many fascinating mysteries, and one of the most intriguing of them is standing right before us. A great stone egg lying in the corpse of an ancient kingdom. And this egg? Is it warm? It certainly gives off a unique air. Can it be opened? There are strange marks all over it. I do so love a mystery. And who knows what the other marvels lie even deeper below us. I wonder if it's like a statue, or if it's like a fossil. Or just an actual egg that's not actually stone. I imagine there's gonna be something to do with that later. Those masks probably mean something on there. Yeah, it looks like some temple of some kind. Okay, so I have to be holding jump to attack downwards, I think. That's useful. Yeah, appears so.
I was wondering why I wasn't always in there. Oh, is this a boss? I don't think I'm quite ready, so let's explore down this way first, and if we have to go back, we have to go back. Well, at least I know what to expect there. Oh, bury my mother, pale and slight. Bury my father with eyes shut tight. Bury my sisters two by two, and then when you're done, let's bury me too. Ha ha ha, do you know that one? It's one of my favorites. We can sing something else if you like. You start singing and I'll join in. I bet you have a beautiful singing voice. So what are you down here for? If you came to get wealthy, just look around you. These mines are still bursting with riches. There's plenty to for everyone to go around. Just grab a pick and join in. So hitting those things, grant soul. I'm relearning a lot of the what stuff too. Maybe let's uh, continue exploring in case we can't go back there. So I don't want to like miss out on stuff. stuff if I die. Because 57 seems like a decent amount. I assume it's like the currency. I kind of like the cave ambiance more than the current music. Like, this is still great, but I really like the stuff they had at the very beginning. It really made it feel like cave like. Yeah, I need to find the way to deposit this metal or something safely. Is it. it I think it's metal. Looks like metallic. I need to, I assume I need to save someone before I may would like deposit it, probably.
<laughs> Nothing to interact with there. Hmm. Maybe that's something for later. I know this is like Metroidvania style, so it's kind of have to come back a lot, which is cool. Oh, so it can damage enemies too. Nice. Don't need this. Can't go there. That's definitely something I'm supposed to do later. Like, if I get a wall jump or something, I guess. Okay, here's someone. Hmm, uh, hello there. Come down to explore these beautiful old ruins. Don't mind me. I have a fondness for exploring myself. Getting lost and finding your way again is a pleasure like no other. We're exquisitely lucky, you and I. I'm a cartographer by trade, and I'm working on mapping this area right now. Would you like to buy a copy of my work so far? Yes. Okay, so it is the currency. A map can be a useful thing, but it alone won't show you where you are. If you've not at the head for directions, I suggest purchasing a compass from my wife, Iselda. She's just now opening our new map shop in Dirtmouth, selling all sorts of useful things to wanderers like yourself. She even sells some of my old maps from time to time. I pop back to see her whenever I finish mapping an area. She's always so excited to see me. That's nice. I, yeah, I'll f let's go back there, and then we can go fight that boss once I spend this metal. You can get like talismans or something to like upgrades. I don't know when you get those though. So unlocking that guy or person would be cool. <sighs> ba panada. Come to my map, Happy. It was really my husband you should be dealing with, but what a surprise. He's headed down below. Yeah, I met him up earlier. He'll pop back up occasionally, deliver new maps for the store, but I do wish he'd spend a little more time up here. I'm not much interested in retail myself. You and me both, Asoda. You and me both. It's not a f that fun experience. Now let's see what's here for me to sell. Okay, I, I underestimated exactly how much I'll need. Yeah. So let's maybe do a bit more grinding. So we need 220 for the compass, which is definitely something I want. And then 120 to add on to the map. So 340 total. But we, we can do like the one, either one, I guess. Preferably the get the 220 and then fight that boss boss or whatever it is and then that will hopefully give us some for the next that's the current plan
Yeah, maybe we want to get that like feather, the like quill, and then do it. Just because we're we're still a decently long way towards the compass. As helpful as I think that would be. Nada. Oh, it's, I'm dumb. I thought it was 110. Well, we should be able to get it pretty quickly, and not too far. And what are these? Pins to mark stuff on the map. Just the benches. At some point I should check if there's anything on the other s on the right side of the wall. Cause I haven't checked that, and there could be something useful there. That's cool. I wonder if it does damage, like as a projectile on the angle, or if it's just like a graphical thing. Is there a way to get, like, at least the soul and stuff back? Does having that, at least some of that back before the boss fight make things a fair bit easier? Maybe get a bit of. It's hopefully, an easy soul. Or not so easy if I'm dumb. Well, that accomplished nothing. Except get me a bit of uh, coins, metal, metal. Yeah, I guess I can go. Uh, still not entirely sure what those are.
Not sure if that was the correct way you're supposed to do it. I take it that has to do with the person who was crying. Like the bug who was crying over there. That would make sense. Okay, now where else in the map? I'm really wishing I had that pin to identify where, where I am. That's definitely like the next task, is getting that. So we only need like 160. <laughs> no, it's 140. I need like a double jump, double jump to get there. I don't know, so I don't know if like you get the double jumps and stuff from like a talisman. I don't think. I remember that being the case, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not so sure. So if we can find, like, wherever we get the talismans, that might be super useful. Just stray too far from like that main area. Just because I don't want to like die and lose monies. So we need 60 more. That's not that bad. I 
I know there was a thing that we can't get past this way, but is there hey. money? Get? Nope, it's not there. It's in the one below, I think. I, uh, hey troll. Uh, I haven't played, I've played this like a bit before, but I don't, I really don't remember much. I remember like talismans are a thing. Uh, I don't remember like where I go to get them or anything. I think there's like a person you buy it from, I think. Uh, that's the main stuff. I know like you can get stuff for like, uh, wall jump and that kind of thing but I don't remember where so yes but not in, not in a long time all right so there's no I was hoping there would be one of those like metal caches. Yeah, Ori, I haven't played Ori. I've heard really good things about it. So it's on my list of games to play eventually. But that's a long list at the moment. But I've heard like yeah, I've like gotten recommendations about it and like everything I've seen in like videos and stuff seems really good. It's pretty similar to this, right, in terms of like gameplay. I, I haven't like I got recommendations and stuff from it, but I haven't uh, kept up on it in a bit. Like, cause I, I was gaming a bunch uh, last year, like 2021 to 2022. Uh, but more recently and stuff, I've had to, I mean, with like real life stuff and that kind of thing, it's kept me a bit distracted from hobbies and that kind of thing. Gosh darn it. Uh, so I haven't been keeping up on games as much and that kind of thing. Still been playing a bunch, but just keeping up on that. Not as much, so I can't really remember some of it. But I know it looks really good. Maybe I just don't try to get that because I'm dumb. Can you get from here? Oh. Oh yeah, they're both platformers, so I thought that was the case. Are they both like Metroidvania style games? Yeah, that's two more that are on my list, like the Castlevania games and stuff. Uh, and Metroid are two games that like have been on my list for a while that they seem pretty fun. Uh, but I just never found the time to play. Those might be fun to do, like on stream or something. I don't want to like overload it with too much, just platformer stuff, because I already have Celeste. And I want to have a bit of like diversity in games that I'm playing on stream uh, yeah the game is fun I remember it being fun if like a bit annoying for me he's not very great at like uh, platformers and stuff okay so it's not quite much for me I know there's also another game at some point is, I know there's like a sequel to Hollow Knight coming out, I think. I don't know if it's already out or like when it's coming out. But I, I think it's coming out some point soon. Uh, but like, don't quote me on that or anything. Uh, so if that comes out, 
then after beat this, that might be something to do as well. Oh, we're almost at enough coins. Awesome. Yeah. So what are the little metal things I'm collecting called? Do they have a name or is it just like metal? Or something? Cause I've, I've been calling them like metal or coins or something, but I'm not sure if they have an actual name or not. Oh, so it does come out soon. Yeah, I think it's on like my Steam wish list and stuff, but uh, I hadn't like heard anything about it in a while, so I was curious. Oh, Geo. Okay. I guess it's like metal rock stuff. I guess. Okay, now we can buy the compass. Okay, so go to the. Tr so is it not talismans? It might. Oh, it might have been charms then, I guess. That could be. Right now. A charm talisman, you know, is basically the same thing. I think that I think I remember that there's like another vendor you can get here or in one of the other buildings for charms. So I want to find him or the, I want to find them. Because that would be nice. Okay, I th the easiest access to the unexplored places is this way, I think. Because we can just fall down that big chamber. I need to stop walking into... I think most of my damage taken so far has been me just, like, being dumb and walking into them. So I should avoid doing that. Mm -hmm. Probably should refill the soul and stuff here because it's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think talking to the map guy more at the moment does anything. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, so it's either walking into them or falling like that, like, like an idiot. Despite, okay, ooh, this is useful. I shouldn't hit him now, though, because I, I don't know if I die and lose them. I'm assuming so. And I'd rather not lose the, the Geo before, like, having a way, like, collect that before having a way to spend it. So they're probably that. Lo I'm assuming that's like a boss above us. Uh, okay, so we can get it back from the spirit, right? Okay, so I'm still probably gonna leave that because I don't want to risk it. But I don't have to be quite as cautious, I guess. I don't need to collect a bunch of Geo at the moment because I don't have anywhere to spend it. Besides, like, those pins. But if they're, like, manually placed pins, I'm probably gonna not remember to place them. So, I don't know if there's a point in buying them 
At least not at the moment. Ah, okay. I thought that there was a chance I could walk on them while they were like stationary. Guess not. I'm assuming I can't hit them either. The music is really nice. A lot of these like indie games have really good music. Maybe I just notice it more in indie games than like AAA. But I feel like the I feel like it's generally better in indie games. Though that could just be me. Alright, now we're going the right way. Yeah, sound design is definitely better. I do think that they have like some really good sound design here. I think like the sound design overall in this game seems excellent so far. I do like, I do kind of prefer how it was at the very, very beginning uh, where they, I think they did a better, like they had really good cave ambiance there. And I, and they kind I feel like that's not I mean, that's not, like, uh, being used in this, which I think would still work, but I also understand why they wouldn't want to have, like, the same thing going the whole time. Or is he just stuck? I guess not. Yeah. But the sound design for like the individual stuff like swinging the needle and like the enemies moving and getting hit and stuff is really good I think like it really like actually feels like you're like that's what's happening But yeah, even in like other indie games and stuff, like, you know, Undertale, obviously, is a really good example. Celeste also, I think, has really good music. And like sound design. Yeah, he did just clip into a wall, huh? I wanna, I really need to find the charm person. Because then I can spend and like start collecting those geo 
nodes without being too I okay I know you can I know you can like jump off the spikes but I'm also very non confident in my skills at doing so yeah Maybe we keep that for later. Because I mean, I'm definitely going to be going back. Oh, she made pig step? I didn't know that. I don't keep up with, like, the sound designers and, like, mus the music musicians and stuff behind, like, the video game music as much as I should. Which is, yeah, that's, like, because they do a lot of great work, and, like, I think I've talked about it, like, their work and stuff, like, people in, like, stre other streams and stuff, but, like, I don't keep up with it, like, I don't know the names behind it, which is, yeah, it's, like, the same with, like, movies and stuff, generally, is I don't, like, even if I like the music in a movie a lot, I don't keep up with it, which is, yeah, bad habit. It's only made by two people plus the composer. That's pretty impressive. I definitely couldn't make anything like that. Like, you can see how, like, the base stuff would be fairly d doesn't seem too difficult like platformers like pretty established genre so there's a lot to draw on there but like for the details and everything even just like the visual assets the music like enemy types and all that stuff once you get into like the inner workings of it besides just the base gameplay mechanics oh does it waste it if I accidentally stop pressing up. That sucks. Then that's, yeah, that's very impressive that it was only two. We're only running the map. Usually don't either, but I try to make these make the effort to remember the names. I really like the OST, yeah. I try, I do that a bit more frequently for like uh, movies and stuff. Uh, or at least like I'll find like specific tracks and that kind of thing. But for games, I don't know, I find it a lot. I, I, I just do it less. I think it's also in part because. In a movie theater and stuff, they credits immediately after, and you're already there in like a theater, like physically there, so it's a lot. Like, I don't skip the credits as much, so to speak. In that, but like, I do skip the credits and stuff sometimes in games and stuff. Because, you know, it's the. I want to get to like playing a new game, but to replaying. So. That was easier than I thought. I sometimes read the credits for movies, like if. Okay, maybe not. That's why it's a bit easier. Though because there's like stuff inside. Wait, so do I run faster 
than those guys charging. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh. you oaf. You wield your nail like a club. Esme, how much deeper do we have to go? Oh, oh what? Oh. Who are you? I see this old village. What a strange de dream to have led me down here. If you hadn't found me, I don't think I would have ever awoken. I'm sly. Usually I live an uneventful life up in Dirtmouth. The air in these ruins doesn't agree with me, so I'd best be getting back. If you return above, come and see me. I'm probably the friendliest face left here, and I can thank you properly for your good deed. But yeah, sorry, I do read the credits and stuff sometimes. Uh, it helps that, like, usually I'm with family and stuff, who are a lot keener on catching the credits than I am. So I'll usually, like, stick with them at the movie theater while I'm catching the credits. Because I don't really want to, like, just leave by myself. But, uh... I do, like, if there's something, like, in particular, like, an actor whose name I can't place, or I'm, I really liked, who I didn't know the name of, or, like, a composer, I really like the music or something, I'll either, like, check the credits or I'll, like, search it up, uh, outside of the theater immediately after. Yeah, I'm hoping that was the charm person that we rescued, that would be really convenient. Then we can just go and so. After we buy charms, I think we go to where that boss is. Uh, I think Hornet, I think I remember her name being. Uh, fight her, beat her. Uh, and then I think I might call it just have it be a short stream. Uh, my throat's a bit worn out uh, and stuff. So I'm not 100%. Uh, yeah. And it's been like a bit of a long week. But I will continue streaming probably Tuesday, 5 p.m. Uh, this. And then, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a like, firmer schedule out for the week uh, later tonight as well. But I'm definitely going to make this more like an ongoing playthrough, similar to what Celeste currently is. And it'll probably, after I beat Celeste and I think the epilogue, uh, I'll start streaming this at that, like, time, uh, so Fridays at 5, uh, but until then it'll probably be, uh, Tuesdays at 5, is Hollow Knight. That's the current plan. Yeah, so it'll be Tuesdays, Hollow Knight. Friday's Celeste, and then Saturday's kind of like a free slot, I guess. Okay, you just, oh, it's a, hello there. I knew we'd meet again. How do you like my cozy little store? I made myself pretty comfortable here selling little trinkets to travelers like yourself. Yeah, if you're planning a trip below, sell for items to improve. Okay, so you are, you are a, uh, you do sell charms for all the That's deal. great. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like in that like bad like stuff mentally or physically or anything. Like I'm fine long term and stuff. It's just been a bit of a long week and I, yeah, I want to you know uh, be in the best condition and stuff for streams and that kind of thing. Life and heart grants you more time to recover after taking damage. Gathering Swarm seems pretty useful. I don't know how many notches I currently have. Uh, 
I also can't afford anything else at the moment. I'll, I'm gonna go check and see how many notches I have. Okay, so you do have three notches. So I can get the stalwart one, and despite I think the gathering swarm would be really nice, I think the stalwart's probably the more useful for the boss fight. So let's get that, and then yeah, I bought the t I bought the um, quill and the charm from the map lady. I was considering buying like th <sighs> these. I don't know if they like you're supposed to manually pin them and stuff because if you are, I'm definitely gonna forget to do that and that kind of thing. Uh, which is why I'm a bit hesitant to buy them, because then, like, it's kind of a waste. Uh, but I do want to get Gathering Swarm. Oh, okay, they're automatic. That, okay, yeah, then that's definitely... I definitely get, I want to get Gathering Swarm next, uh, but after that, probably those. I mean, I could also like probably grind off stream for like that stuff. I don't know how interested, because I don't know how interested uh, people are in seeing me like just hit stuff in this and get hit a bunch of times. Obviously, like in the grinding, not progressing the store or anything. Just basically going to that big uh, chamber and just whacking everything. Yeah, I might, I might do that if everyone, like, I want to get you guys' take on that. Because I don't want to be, if people don't mind it or think that would be, like, a bit silly, then no need to. But otherwise, I think it might be a decent idea to just get, like, at least for, like, the pins and stuff. Where it's not, like, a super material change in the gameplay. That could probably be fine. Go, go fight, I think it is Hornet, I'm pretty sure it's the name. Are they, first of, are they, oh that respawns. Uh. Oh yeah, I mean we're not, yeah, if, I'm fine if you put like stream in the background or whatever, I, like I do not mind at all. I totally understand, I do that a lot. Uh, my attention span is god awful. Uh, if you haven't noticed from like the tangents or distraction, how distracted I get, even just talking on stream. Uh, so I usually put streams in the background or don't like stay watching them for a super long periods at a time. So I have, I'm not offended at all in the slightest if people do that. I mean, like, it's what I do. So. Is there a place to like rest? So I'm worried I might have set my respawn over by I'm yeah, I'm worried I reset the respawn over by uh the bench yeah tangents are great uh, I know mint uh, yeah, another great flavor streamer uh, does a lot of great tangents uh, those are fun the problem is all the stuff I would tangent about are completely unrelated to the stuff on stream 
Because, like, there'd be, like, hyperfixations and that kind of thing. Which are fun for me to tangent about. But especially when they're not related at all to what's happening on stream or anything. It's a bit awkward, like... Who are you guys, I don't Minta is tangent incarnate, yeah. I was talking with her a bit, like, uh, off stream and stuff, and it, she is still, it, it's not like a, on, just an on stream personality thing. Yeah. What's important is feeling dead air, that's fair. I think that's what, like, I'm most nervous about. I was okay, so I thought this was gonna be Hornet, the false, the false knight. I was not expecting. Yeah, he doesn't seem that bad. If I say as I immediately get hit. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't seem that bad at the moment. Oh, now I feel kind of bad just hitting him when he's down like that. Expecting the the one who like dashes around. I've, I've, I'm pretty sure the name's Hornet, but I'm still not on. Oh, I see. That's what I get for saying he's not that bad. But yeah, I thought, I mean, is she the one after that then, Hornet? Because I, I was pretty sure she's one of the first, right? Like, I, that's, that's one of the things I, I kind of remember the bosses a bit. I didn't, I didn't remember that this guy was the first boss, but I remember that, like, he was the boss. I know there's, like, a boss... Uh, he like flies around and stuff. That's where, uh, in my last playthrough, I, uh, gave up. Was on that one. I had a really hard time with that boss. Uh, but I don't remember, like, the order, I guess. I thought I did. So I guess it's this one first. So false knight first, and then maybe is it hornet? I think, and then I don't know if there's others in between. I think there are more in between.
maybe I was underestimating how how easy that was gonna be. I mean, he is pretty adorable. That's why I feel really bad when I hit him when he's down. He reminds me of like the dog knight from Undertale. I always feel bad about beating them. Up. Yeah. So I think I underestimated how uh, how either difficult this is, or more probably more accurately, how bad at the game I am. I wish you had kind of like a dash thing. That would be really nice. I don't know if we get that later or not. That would be great. Oh, the mace is a bug. I did not realize that. I thought it was just like a rock or like a piece, a large piece of geo. Or something. <laughs> Ah, okay, I see it now, yeah. Yeah, I kind of assumed the stick bit was still a stick. Yeah, but I really thought it was like a piece of Geo or something. One more phase left, or three. Series of first. Five boss, probably one. Because usually it's in like god numbers. Right? Does it not? I see that it doesn't crawl off, does it? Oh. You didn't have to like immediately prove me wrong. Okay. Alright, so. How about this? We'll get the. the, the Gathering Swarm quest. a uh, crest. We'll like get some. Geo for that. Preferably not die here. Uh, and then we'll call a stream. saves 
Uh, so it, it looks like it does. That would be unfortunate if it didn't. Yeah. But I want to get enough money to get the Gathering Swarm stuff. Either through fighting that big bug. Or by... Probably by uh, getting a bunch of those. Yeah, maybe a tactical retreat is in order. And we'll get we'll get the geo through like the caches instead, and then once we have enough for gathering swarm, we'll go by that and then call us through. And then continue on Tuesday. So there were some missing, I think. Yeah, there's one up there. Yeah, see, it's like, it's like Dog Knight, exactly, yeah. Uh, so it's like a striking resemblance. So I don't, I don't recall their weapon being a bug. Yeah, that's another really good game, is Undertale. The hot take... Uh, Sword of Justice is a better song than Metroid Mania. That's my Undertale take. Both are good, but... Oh, the spear has a face on it. I wonder if... The, I wonder if one of them's a reference to the other, then. That would be interesting, because I feel like indie games tend to, like, reference each other a lot. I don't know which came first. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's Undertale, but I there's no real, like, rationale behind that assumption. But yeah, Undertale's a really fun game. I don't think it's one that I'll end up streaming. Uh... Because I have a lot of games I think would be fun to stream, and I've already played Undertale, uh, like, completely, so it's not as, I don't think it'd be as interesting to watch. Deltarune, though, if that fully releases, uh, just avoid dying, then that I'll probably stream at some point, because that would be fun. Uh, and I haven't played that fully. And if that's the case, then maybe Undertale as well at, at that point. But oh, it's a secret area. Cool. But like with like all the games I play, I'd recommend trying out Undertale if you haven't already. I feel like a lot of people have, especially if you're talking about it uh, but if not it is really fun to play even the genocide ending sorry I missed you if you're feeling lost why not pop up to our store in Dirtmouth and purchase the map of this area, available now for an excellent price. I mean, might, might do that once we get enough, but I want to get the Gathering Swarm first, and also avoid dying would be great.
Yeah. I only did the genocide route because, uh, like a friend recommended it to me. I think my first one, my first one wasn't the pacifist, it was just like normal, I guess. And then second time around I did a pacifist. And then I did the genocide. Because, the, yeah. It is like what you're like supposed to do, I feel like. But it, it is not, it does, it does hit you in the feels, at least for me, doing like the genocide one. Cause it's pretty self-aware about that. I hope they don't make me have to do that in Delta Rune. Because I will probably, like if it's an ending, which it probably will be, well, I will feel like obligated to do it, but I don't want to. back to where we died. And we'll be at full this time. I don't remember all the names of the roots and stuff uh, in Deltarune. Because I did. That was uh, one I didn't do, like, I didn't actively go and try to do the routes. Uh, because, I mean, I, fi I figured, like, you know, they're still going to be adding more stuff to the game. And so I'll wait till, like, it's fully out before doing it. Like, I still played it and stuff, but I didn't purposefully uh, do the roots. But I mean, a, a, a route even darker than the genocide one, it, it'll be interesting, certainly. I don't know how keen I will be to do it, though. I don't know when, like, they'll fully... I imagine it's still not for a bit. Uh, I kept up with it a lot more last year, but I haven't kept up, like checked recently. So I, I don't have an idea of when it's gonna release. That will be exciting. One thing that indie game releases do a lot better is they feel a lot more polished when they're fully released. Like a lot of like the AAA games these days feel like they should be releasing in like early alpha and not in like, and not as like completed games that cost like $80. Like, I, I was watching an interesting, uh, video by Asmund Gold, uh, Josh Riff Hayes and stuff about, uh, like, and they mentioned, uh, it was about Diablo Immortal, but they mentioned, like, why indie games are generally, like, better, which is that the, like, uh, they had a hypothesis of that, like, AAA games, like, the studios and stuff have gotten so bloated that uh, they're not like, they're spending too much money on like stuff 
to be able to make good games like proper games without them either being like rush jobs or like very monetized like loot boxes all that kind of thing which I think is an interesting point and it kind of makes like a decent amount of sense to me so like yeah it was interesting so maybe they it might be like for triple A stuff if they like downsized a fair bit if they wanted to like make, keep the quality I guess would be the strategy because it does like they do feel a bit bloated now they're definitely releasing lower quality games and stuff like Call of Duty and stuff is always my typical example but like even like Assassin's Creed like I feel like you at this point you name a AAA franchise for the most part uh, except for like the From Software games uh, which are have all been pretty good I haven't played all of them uh, really just Elden Ring like primarily but I know they have a reputation for being good so I have no reason to doubt that and I think also God of War as well another franchise that's like held up to the test of multiple game releases but like besides that it, it gets a lot harder to think of uh, good game series and stuff and other good triple A games like for Titanfall for example like that uh, it's not technically the same like series apex uh, but I mean set in the same world and everything and it's you know obviously that's a very different type of game and more like appealing to the common like the general interest towards battle royales at the time it was released and like still probably net to this day uh so it's like kind of moving away from its roots and I, in my opinion a worse quality game than Titanfall 2 uh I mean I've still enjoyed Apex and stuff but I think Titanfall 2 is way better and so I feel like the game companies are definitely moving away from they're like milking the franchises for all they can get out of it Whereas they should be like maybe even if it means downsizing a bit to maintain the quality and stuff. I feel like longer term that's better. Game sales for Blood 2 Triple A is either open world single player with a million DLC or live service FPS with a billion skins. Yeah, I think that's fair. Personally, I I do enjoy like open world single players and stuff. Uh, I think like the million DLC is definitely like an issue that I have with it. Uh, especially, like, there's a, a lot of stuff seems to be, like, DLC on release seems dumb to me. Because I think if you're releasing DLC, it should be, like, something that happens. That's, like, f that's it should be, like, proper future content that you're adding. Because I don't have a problem with them, like, as long as it's not, like, ridiculously priced, charging for, like, future, like, expansions and stuff down the line. But when, like, you're charging for stuff that I think, uh... Forspoken, like the recent uh, Square Enix game, I think, uh, did that where they had like, Yuri, I don't know if you got the DLC immediately with like the deluxe edition or the pre-order or whatever, but I there definitely was something there when I was looking at it in the Steam store uh, that you either get like, immediate, yeah, like promised access to it and that kind of stuff or you get it immediately. Uh, and I think that's kind of dumb. Because, uh, you know, obviously that's going to be, like, priced extra than the base game. The base game's already expensive. Uh, so, like, that's yeah, like, charging on release for a DLC, like, because why wouldn't you just include that in the base game? That's, like, I don't get that. But, like, if you charge, like, make a DLC a year down the line, a few months down the line, like, I'm on board with that. Because I do, like, you know, it is nice having games not, like, die out. Because there's a lot of fun games like uh not that witcher 3 or anything's like died out uh but like continuing releasing stuff for it like large expansions for it so that there's you can t more to go back and play uh you know is definitely really nice and with live service fps with billion skins i i have very mixed opinions on fps it's fun for a bit and then it's not fun it's kind of like a love hate thing and I think billion skins and stuff, it's better than like monetizing, like pay to win monetization and stuff. 
Uh, but like it is kind of, it is definitely feels bloated and like it's, and very heavily pushed and stuff. Here, Witcher Three and died out in the same. It's not. I'm not saying it's like the game's like dead or anything. I do think that like having. I know they recently added some stuff, uh, some like DLC stuff to it, uh, which is cool, and I'm definitely in favor of that. But I think like not like more larger scale DLC for like longer term. Uh, is very nice for like those type of open world uh, single player games so they don't like so they don't end up dying out because I, I mean I don't think it's Witcher 3 is dead yet but like you know all games die out single player open worlds generally if I find a bit quicker than others especially if they don't get like fairly consistent DLC releases but yeah, FPS with billion skins, like the skin, having it be skins and stuff is better than having it be pay to win, but it not by much. Yeah, Witcher 3 DLC did win an award for Game of the Year Best RPG, yeah. I'm not saying that the DLC is bad and stuff, I've played some of the DLC and it's really fun. I've really enjoyed playing it. Uh, but I don't think that, like, I think that it's a bit, uh, like, for the single player RPG and stuff, it's like, it's, it will die out slowly if you, especially if you don't reach that kind of, like, renowned status that, like, Witcher 3 has, uh, TF2, Team Fortress 2 as well, I think has kind of reached that, like, cult status, uh, and also, I think TF2 being an FPS game also helps a bit with uh, like surviving despite no updates. Uh, yeah, I mean TF2 is also it seems very like a very unique case. Uh, I'm su a bit surprised it survived that far, but I mean like it's clearly a good game for having done so and stuff. So I can't criticize it too heavily or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, I do feel like, especially like having too many skins or having too much DLC on release, or too overly priced DLC is. I think overly priced DLC is the big problem for like single player open world stuff, because uh, then it's you're presenting like a really big barrier to play, uh, and it's kind of difficult because that's the main way that you want them to be making money because for like open world single player stuff it's more it's like it's not like a fps with a million skins where you can just it's the people will a lot be spending a lot more because you're like you're just buying the game once and then uh you're not really paying again it's very hard to monetize in that regard so i can understand why they price uh the dlc and stuff uh, more expensively, but I also, like, you know, as someone who plays those types of games and has to be the one putting the price for the DLC, it's also, you know, it's a miserable experience for when you do do that or whatever, so it's a very mixed uh, bag. Destiny 2 is another, like, one where it kind of combines the worst of open world uh, DLC based games and the live service FPS with a billion skins because it's got like skins and stuff and then it also has big uh, DLC releases and that kind of thing and it's it is a fun game like I've been playing it a lot especially in the past couple of days and really enjoying it but it's very monetized to an unfriendly extent not to like the same extent as like uh, Diablo Mortal or anything not like anywhere near that but it's not a fun experience of like the monetization is not making it, it kind of taints the experience just like because despite knowing how much you're fun you're having gameplay like if you try to do certain things you may be locked out etc and that's just not like you know it's not fun uh especially if you can't afford to do that or and like especially like for destiny like the some of the dlc is like a hundred dollars uh at least cad so it's it's like can be prohibitively expensive. 
And like I'm not, it's I'm not sure because I'm not I haven't played too much Destiny to know why it's like fully free, like what you can always do for free, and what's what's like kind of exclusive to DLC and stuff. Uh, yeah, hundred dollars is a lot for a DLC, because it's that's more than a, like some that's more than a lot of even triple A games at that point. Uh, and you have to be you have to be a, a really good game uh, to to be like selling that like straight face to feel like with no like because like you have to because like you can't like otherwise you just I'd rather almost buy a new game than spend a hundred dollars on DLC I mean at a certain point it's like some cost and stuff which is definitely a problem uh, but like, to be like, I I imagine that I imagine the DLC initially were a hundred dollars, because it's a bit hard to, like, it's hard enough as it is, uh, to. It's hard enough as it is to like, s straight face be like, our next DLC is a hundred dollars, I imagine, and to like prop actually sell that to people and get them to buy it. But like it's, it's got to be especially tough if you don't have like an established game for a super long period of time. I know there's Destiny One and stuff, but even then, I feel like the first DLC for like Destiny Two, you gotta price it a bit low ball and increase the price and stuff. And like so, it's kind of like you know the cooking a frog thing. Yeah, either that or be a gotcha. Yeah, gotcha is another like interesting case and stuff. Uh, that's definitely. In some ways, I, yeah, I'd say it's gotcha generally worse, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's, uh, you can kind of tell what you're getting into. I think the exception a bit was Diablo Immortal, because it's appealing to the Diablo fans, which is a gotcha game, per se. And so, you don't necessarily know what you're getting into. But, like, generally for gotcha, you know what you're getting into. But there also are, like, very predatorily... Uh, price that I've fallen into like those traps and stuff before uh, with like training card games and stuff as well that have like loot box mechanics like card packs and all that kind of thing because uh, I have uh, kept pretty bad impulse control on that type of thing and so uh, I'm pretty susceptible to that kind of stuff uh, even despite being pretty aware of like all the tricks and stuff that they use to get me to buy stuff uh, but I feel like even like and I'd have I say this despite having not just card games but also like proper gacha games and stuff uh, falling down those rabbit holes uh, but I feel like you do kind of know what you're getting into a bit more than you do in like other games I think at this point now in like 2023 uh, like triple A gaming scene, you kind of have an expectation. Oh, there's going to be a, a battle pass. There's going to be expected DLC. But I think like maybe like two, three years ago, maybe not. And so it's a bit different. Uh, but yeah. Personally, I I find the triple A monetization more egregious than Gotcha. Just because I know like Gotcha is like that's kind of like. It's like it's what you're buying is the loot box, is is the gambling and stuff like going into it. Whereas if I'm buying like a triple A game, I'm buying it for the gameplay because I do think that the gameplay is generally a bit better than in gotcha games. Uh, I think that's not an unpopular or like hot take. Uh, but like so you're buying you, like a big appeal of like triple a games is the gameplay and stuff and so when you're also pricing it like with the dlc and stuff it feels a bit unfair because it's not like it's not what we're wanting uh, like you know that wasn't the agreement going into it and all that kind of stuff uh yeah i think it's worse for games like destiny and stuff where it's free to play going in uh I'm definitely more wary of those types of games. Uh, like, if it's free to play, then I'm definitely, like, more hesitant looking at it 
than if it's priced, even if it's priced at a, at the level of like a AAA game, which at this point is like, what, 80 bucks? Ugh, ridiculous. Yeah. I, th I could talk about it for a bit longer. I'm going to end it here. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go on. Uh, I'll probably, like, ramble about it in future streams and stuff. Because, like, the design of... I've watched, like, a decent amount of videos and stuff on, like, the design of monetization of those of games and MMOs and stuff. Even though I don't play a lot of MMOs. Uh, I've been meaning to. But I uh, haven't done that in the past. So that's more like a new uh, interest. Uh, but I think we'll probably end it up. So you can use that money to develop the game. Arc Knights release several new modes you can play for free. Yeah, I haven't played a lot of Arc Knights. Uh, the main... Uh, the main gacha game I played was Azure Lane. Because I'm also really interested in like... Uh, military history, particularly World War II. And especially... Uh, like ships especially uh like naval history and stuff so it's kind of like that was a big appeal to uh, getting into azure lane because to be honest i was pretty desperate there's there's really not a lot of good naval like ship games and like so i knew i was getting into it was like this is gonna not be like the gameplay wise not gonna be a good game but like what else do i have there's nothing else really available uh so I tried Arc Knights for a bit as well because I was curious. Uh, I've got a friend uh, who plays it, uh, so I've been like curious and like inquiring and stuff. But I also am, you know, wary to get into that because I know that I'm particularly susceptible to those types of uh, like gotcha psychological tactics that they use and stuff. Uh, despite like being aware of them, probably more aware than like. Uh, the average person, maybe not the average gacha player. Uh, I think I'm probably like at least on par with the average gacha player. Broline talks a lot about game design too. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that in the stream. That'd be a fun, interesting. I don't have a lot of experience in game design. I just I've watched a lot of like videos and stuff on it because I find like the particularly the psychology behind some of that stuff quite interesting. Uh, but I haven't. I mean, I haven't talked to Broline uh, really at all uh i'd definitely be interested but i'm also a bit hesitant reaching out uh, i don't want to like uh you know like because they're all doing their own thing and stuff and i don't want to appear like i'm leeching or anything like that that's a big concern of mine uh so i've been like slowly trying to reach out and at least like say hi and stuff but not like you know uh bother them too much or anything any of the rest of the flavor members uh but it would be that would be a fun thing i, I would be interested in talking to him about uh, game design and stuff over here i'm interested but he's one of the he's one of the people in flavor i haven't talked to like at all uh, not even just like in passing uh like privately so i don't know like maybe at some point that would be cool uh, but anyways, uh, let me see if anyone's live right now. I think Araminta's supposed to be live at the moment. Uh, I think she was planning on streaming Final Fantasy XIV now. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else in flavor is. I think it's just her. But let me just check to make sure. Uh, okay, Rika... Rika Paprika is also stream appears to be streaming uh, Doom Eternal as well, but I think it's just the two of them. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested, uh, check out either of them. Uh, I'm gonna head out now and call the stream. Thank you for coming. It was very nice having people. Uh, hopefully, see you next time. Bye.